First song I wrote, I was about seven years old. You were about <laughs> so, seven. About right? seven. So, um, what's that? Twenty something, twenty-three years, twenty-five? No, twenty-five years ago. Six years, yeah. Okay. But I mean, seriously writing, let's say since I was about fifteen, when I first heard Jimi Hendrix, that's when I knew I had to, you know, pick up my guitar and start doing something with it. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix was your inspiration. Absolutely, yeah. I first saw Jimi Hendrix some 20 years ago at Wallman Skating Rink when they used to have the concerts in Central Park. A group that I was managing, the Rascals, were headlining. Right. At that point, no one had heard of Jimi Hendrix. And I remember yawning, saying, why do I have to sit through this? He was splendid. He was splendid. And then a few months later, went on to do a show for Brian Epstein at a theater in London that Brian was promoting. And his reviews were so incredible that soon the world... Wasn't he sort of miscast a little bit with some very, very mundane sounding pop or very clean cut sounding pop people? I think remember there was... I, I'm not sure about that. I think Walker Brothers and a few other... People. I don't remember, but I do remember reading the reviews on his debut in London. Yeah. And he came out a star, even before he had a record. The reviews That's were right. just incredible of his playing, and his innovation. He was a virtuoso guitar. I'm sure he inspired a lot That's of people right. like you. Yeah. Ron, where, where are you from? Where were you born? I was born in India, New Delhi. New Delhi. Which I left when I was about six years old and uh, lived in London until 73 when I moved here. So you're here about 14 years then? Well, actually, I've been here now. It's exactly the same amount of time that I was in London. So consider myself a New Yorker. You know? Now, music, that's your life. Yeah. How do you earn your living? Do you earn it in music? How do you earn it? No, I, I also paint. <laughs> and uh, I do textile designs and posters for people, any kind of artwork that I can get. I seem to have been able to make money doing that up until this point. But um, now I'm really looking to change over and, uh, you know, put the music on the, the top shelf, you know, and really use that much more. And how do you intend to make a living in music? We both know how hard it is and how tough it is to exist in the music business for most musicians, for most composers. I want you to make me a star, Sid. <laughs> I wish I had that magic wand that could do it. I've heard so much of your music. These two new songs yeah. are totally new for me. I've not heard them before, but I've heard some of your your songs, and I like them, and I and I know the work you put into them and the, and the demos well, you've done. We're trying. Um, i working with a very good friend of mine. That, in fact, the only musician I can even deal with at the moment is this friend of mine, Rick Rivera, who is my partner and we're working if, um, I would have loved to have had him here to to play the stuff but um, unfortunately Rick's in Florida for this week but um, what we're doing is we've just been working on our demos and hopefully we're getting a high enough quality demo tape that we can get it out to some of the record companies and um, they'll be able to hear some potential there when do you plan to do that um, well we've finished actually just finished the, the three these two songs and one other which are, you know, all mixed and ready to go at the moment. And I've been doing artwork for the cover of the cassette so they can see something professional, you know. And then you'll get them out to all the companies. Hopefully, yes. I hope you have some results with that. Ram, how long have you been trying? How long have you been at bat trying to make a place for yourself in the music game? Well, um, when I was around 17, I started with a band in London, three-piece. We were doing heavy metal stuff at that time, trying to be as rebellious as possible, make a lot of noise and get back at our parents and stuff, you know. And um, we were actually playing around quite a bit, doing the universities and the local circuit and stuff. 
And um, we used to open up, uh, I don't know if you remember Rory Gallagher's band, of The course. Taste, and uh, Rory Gallagher later on. We used to open up for him. We were very good friends with his brother, Don, who was our road manager. Oh, well, actually, it was his road manager, but he used to help out with our stuff. And, um, you know, various things since then, off and on. Whenever I could get work playing, I did that. But recently, I've really decided that I'm getting too old now to do the the local circuit in Manhattan and have to carry my little amplifier there and plug it in and, you know, have to carry it back home again and get terrible sound and, uh, you know, have six people turn up at the place and stuff. So really, I think it's, uh, it's more sensible to go the record company route and have at least professional, you know, agents work out your plan for you. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it just doesn't, it really doesn't seem worth the playing live when I can sit at home with, with, you know, whatever small recording equipment that we have, but we can get a very fine quality product. And at least we're creating music, which is good music. So that will never stop, you know, I mean, no matter what happens. But hopefully I can get to the point where, you know, we can have some, some cash coming in to put a, a good band. I don't want to have a band that is not absolutely perfectly rehearsed and where there isn't the best equipment to, you know. Okay, I'm sure, pardon me, I'm sure you'll find that good band. I know that you're a fine musician and have excellent taste. Ron, I wish you well, I wish you luck. Get that good demo together, get it out to the record companies, to the right people, and let's have a big hit from Ron Pesan. You deserve it. Thanks. I know how hard you've worked.